Hello everyone, I happened upon this video which I found to be very exciting, uh, Living for Jesus channel, uh, Jesus is Coming, Woman Shares, I'll uh, attach, attach it to this video and put a link to it in the description box. You can go to it right away if you so desire, but I'm calling it the Michael Dream and by two or three witnesses every word is established. God is still making man in his own image. The mediator is not a mediator of one. We're supposed to hear, O Israel. You might say, hear, O Jacob, the Lord our God is one. So the voice that we hear is the voice that we speak forth. Our opinions, attitudes, desires, Light should shine out of darkness. So as we grope for what's righteous and holy, we're kind of choosing our God, if you will. So Jesus, the mediator, is not a mediator of one. So what's the difference but the called or chosen? Choosing to grow in wisdom and be wise virgins or foolish virgins. That's in Matthew 25. In Daniel 12, 10, there are those that do wisely and those that do wickedly. You know, if you hear and obey the wrong voice, you're deceived, but God sees it as doing wickedly. Romans 6, 16, know you not the voice that you uh, hear is the voice that you obey. And of course, that's Genesis 3.15, the fall of heaven and the seed word thought warfare in our mind. Matthew 6.27, who by taking thought can add one cubit to their stature. That means, you know, keeping the word of his patience and becoming a pillar in the temple. Uh, Revelation 3.10, uh, 3.11 and 3.12. Sooner quickly in Revelation 3.11, by the way, is Magda, and Magda is at once a process of becoming one with Jesus. In this dream, um, the man that the woman refers to ends up looking like Jesus, and she distinguished between what she knew as Jesus and in the dream and also a man that Jesus was talking to in the dream, and both ended up looking like one another. It was very exciting. I think it pertains to Michael. But any of the called or chosen of the 144,000. Now, while all of us have the power, given the power by Jesus to tread on serpents and scorpions, we want to be written in the book. Jesus knows who were his, 2 Timothy 2.19. And all those who use the name of Christ cleanse themselves from iniquity. So this is at once, Magda, interpreted in the KJV as soon or quickly. But at once is kind of a process of hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one, a process of becoming one. So she saw the two looking similar in the dream. Uh, very exciting to me and very explanatory and helps to tie the scriptures together and reveal to any anyone called and chosen trying to find the narrow path because many are called, few are chosen. Uh, the path is narrow and few there be that find it. What this all refers to is uh, that we have our fruit unto holiness, Romans 6, 22. Uh, we don't want to be deceived. Uh, Jesus starts out Matthew 24 with, let no man deceive you. You see, because if your testimony becomes one of vanity and not humility and not you know, righteously adhering to the word and reflecting the word, who is Jesus Christ, John 1, 1, 
then the age doesn't even end. This is the Hebrew understanding. Elijah must come or the earth will be smitten with a curse. Malachi 4, 6, I believe. So let no man deceive you. So by two or three words every or by two or three witnesses, every word is established. So it's another John 1, 1 moment in time, if you will, a time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 36 and 7. And this is when the judgment is written before any notion of great tribulation. This is a time of Jacob's trouble going on for years now. And that's in Psalm 149, 9. So it's the judgment written uh, during Jacob's trouble, we're judging angels. We are angels, but the enemy who wants to be like the Most High, Isaiah 14, 14, gets a chance to be in your spirit and in your mind to affect your testimony. And if you have a unrighteous, end up with an unrighteous testimony, let no man deceive you. In other words, don't Deceive your very self. Be a doer of the word, a friend of the world, at enmity with God, etc. So God can only use who he can use at the end of time, at the end of Jacob's trouble. So a very exciting dream. I pray you see that. Here's a few scriptures that I'll go over fairly quickly. And recently, I've learned that 6-3, June 3rd, could be the day that we uh, see uh, three days of darkness and an actual day of the Lord and the ending to Jacob's trouble, the day when the wise virgins escape, uh, leaving time for the foolish virgins and the repentant to repent during the hour of temptation coming upon all the world. It's amazing because 1 Corinthians 6, 3 is, Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? And I have a personal testimony regarding 6, 3, that eight years ago I met a woman. On specifically that day, there was a delay, a delay of a week or so, and finally meeting her on 6-3, it was, you know, just a supernatural event, you might say. And haven't seen her for five years. She's gone through a cancer scare and recently delivered from a cancer scare after 20 months of uh, trial. And uh, it was just a supernatural thing. And that was in 2014 on June 3rd that I met her. And I just, and that was Shavuot, uh, the celebration and remembrance of uh, God giving the law to Israel. So I met her on Shavuot. Eight years later would be Shavuot, the ending of the counting of the Omer and the beginning or another Shavuot, eight years. So that's eight years for me personally, and I just think we're at the end. I think um, it's a day and an hour you think not. Um, it's springtime. Um, it just fits a lot of scriptures. And um, there's 210 days left in the year at that day. That could be 21-0 America, the blue heaven. Gigi refers to often. That's day 155. 6-3 uh, is 1260 days from uh, the winter solstice in 2018. It's 75 days from Biden's New World Order declarations on the spring equinox of this year. So see Daniel 12, 11 and 12, 12 for that. That's the difference between 1260 and 1335. Anyway, 2 Peter 3, 7 
it says by the same word and by two or three witnesses, every word is established. In 1 Corinthians 1.10, that you all speak the same thing. Uh, Malachi 3.16, those who sp spoke often one to another, that's you and the Holy Spirit. That's not you and the enemy. That's not you and your favorite uh, buddy or church member. That's coming together at once. At once is a process, mekdah, not soon or quickly. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. We're part Yahweh. Know ye not that you're God's, Psalm 82, 6. So as lowly as Jacob feels in this world, beat up and humble, the meek shall inherit the earth. And it's the meek's humble testimony that God can use to rule and reign with Christ and show his love through his ambassadors to the world in the age ahead. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So see Psalm 149.9, to execute upon them the judgment written, this honor have all his saints, praise ye the Lord. 1 Corinthians 1.10, now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that y'all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. So that's at once, Macdah, and hearing from the right voice, Romans 6.16. 6, know ye not that you shall judge angels, how much more things that pertain to this life. This is the third time I'm coming to you in the mouth of two or three witnesses. Shall every word be established? Yes and amen. It's another John 1-1 one, one moment in time. Uh, this honor have all his saints during a time of Jacob's trouble. We went like the wind at variance with our families. Just like Jesus said, see John 3-8. We're debating with it. Isaiah 27-8. Uh, when the east wind touched us, we debated with it. But don't let the companions make a banquet out of you. Job 41.6. The enemy's voice would be the companion making a banquet out of you if you start recounting and echoing what the enemy places in your heart and mind. We want to be... Job in Job 41 3, Leviathan, where we speak soft words and make a covenant with God forever. We're Leviathan, the sharp serpent, battling the enemy in the deep battle. Isaiah 27 1. It, this is all in the numbers, too. Take, take a look at the Bible number meanings list on PDF, I'll put in the description box. So that's why Jesus said, let no man deceive you. Don't be the man that deceives yourself. Your testimony has to be right. Heaven is in the stars at night, but heaven is in our mind. And it's a process of two becoming one, Magda, not sooner quickly. Albeit, it's sooner quickly in Revelation 3.11 in the KJV. Uh, the voice you hear is the voice you obey. Uh, you have your fruit unto holiness. Uh, we're being justified, Isaiah 43, 26, and we were given over to the curse of, uh, of, of, of God is visiting the fathers up to the third or fourth generation. Three, four means to redeem. It's, uh, it's in the numbers, uh, 3478 is Israel. 34 means to redeem. Third and fourth generation is figurative. So I have Jewish uh, blood in me because my grandfather's from the Netherlands. 
and what have you. So, but three to four is actually figurative. So this has to do with being called and chosen in the West or Babylon in the last days. See Isaiah 46, 10 and 11, where God's counselor, we're magnifying the law and making it honorable. Um, we establish the law and we magnify the law and we're the ravenous bird called from the east, God's counsel, uh, declaring the, uh, the end from the beginning, the things are not, that are not yet done, saying my counsel will stand. So we want to be written in the book, speaking uh, one often to another, the Holy Spirit and, and our spirit, John 21, 25, that's the books that Jesus is still writing today through the Holy Spirit. So you can read John 21, 25 in a completely different light. And through our tears and suffering and sacrifice, uh, Todd Napier got Zabok. Uh, Jesus said there's no greater love but to sacrifice. And we are the dead in Christ. And I've got testimonies about that. It's no longer us that live. So no man will live and see God. Well, we're, we've seen him in a way, but we're the dead in Christ. So we're able to see some things as the dead in Christ. So we're not really alive. We're sacrifices and alive in him, buried with him through baptism, etc. So Romans 12, 1 and 12, 2 uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, or even the daily sacrifice, if you could believe it. So Romans 12, uh, 2, so that you could prove that which is that good and acceptable thing, what is righteous versus what's unrighteous. You can read that again with fresh understanding. And my tears, are they not written in your book? So through tears and suffering, we sing. Uh, Isaiah 54, 1, Sing, O barren, there thou that did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not bear, for there will be more children of the desolate. So we've been desolated, but from our uh, bellies will flow rivers of living water. And we're the tree of life, uh, John 7, 38. And for the healing of nations. So, uh, 541, by the way, is the gematria value of Israel in Hebrew. Uh, yes, right, L. If you add up all these letters, 31, 200, 310, 541. So Isaiah 54, 1 is good to understand thoroughly. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to have mentioned all of this. I hope you see the dream. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming at once, maybe even June 3rd of 2022. God bless everyone. Amen. Good morning. God bless you, brothers and sisters. So the Lord gave me a dream this morning around one o'clock, I want to say. And I just want to share it with you guys. It's a very powerful dream. So in the dream, it started, I, um, I'm i with my husband in the dream. And, and he's over here talking to a woman named Naomi. Um, and he, I asked him, do you, do you want to be with me? He said, no. And in the past, when I would have dreams like this, I would just be crying. I would be so heartbroken. But in this dream, though I got upset, I wasn't crying, I wasn't weeping, I didn't have that 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 pain that I have felt in the past. And um, so the scene changes and all of a sudden I see this man lying on a bed and he's sleeping and I see Jesus Christ standing over him and Jesus Christ had long dark hair probably up to here like me 
right up to here. Um, he had a robe on and his face was blurred out, but I saw the piercings in his hands and he was standing over the man like this and there was blood and he was standing over him like this and all of a sudden he goes closer, he goes in closer and the Lord starts whispering something to him to so this guy right in his face he, he's hovering over his face he's he's saying stuff but as he's talking power is coming out of his mouth a light this this power how you how at least how i would picture what power looks like that's that's what it looks like like this light this you know this this fire light coming out of his mouth and it's it's hovering over the man and this man's mouth is open and 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 this power is going in him and when i look at the man again he turned into jesus christ the same christ that i was looking at hovering over him it was he he, he looked just like that he he also had the piercings he also had the blood and so this morning you know i was just so blessed by this dream because number one i feel like that's what the lord does for me you know, there's many times, you know, yes, I am in Christ, but there's many times that I do get these dreams that really, you know, they, they do affect you. But I feel God's spirit hovering over me at night and, and just just fighting my, my battles at night, you know, just power, 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 you know, power of his word, his word, just his word is so powerful, you know, and his peace is just incredible that even in my dreams I feel the peace of God right so when I woke up after just like absorbing all of this I said but God but why did this man turn into you as you were speaking over him or you know and the Lord told me and I'm going to read it it is Galatians 2 Two nineteen, okay for i through the law died to the law that i might live to god i have been crucified with christ it is no longer i who live but christ lives in me in the life which i now live in the flesh i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me glory to god so that's why we have been crucified with Christ. When you are in Christ, you have been crucified. You have to carry your cross daily, okay? And um, I just want to encourage you guys that, you know, <sighs> Christ died for us. He went through hell on earth. He was persecuted. Um, he was mocked. Um he was physically abused, you know, he went through hell and I'm sure he felt alone because even when he told his disciples to come, you know, and, 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 and pray with him, they, they, they were sleeping, you know, they were sleeping. And so he definitely felt alone. And the beautiful thing is that though we are crucified with Christ, we will never have to experience what he went through because he did. He paid the ultimate price. So yes, maybe our friends and our family persecute us and, you know, we, 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 we go through things physically, but God is our healer. He's our companion, you know, and so there's many times that I feel alone, but God is my co companion, Jehovah Shama, Jehovah Shama. Thank you, Father. The Lord is our companion. And so I want to encourage anybody who has been tormented at night, tormented during the day with thoughts and fear and anxiety. The Lord's words are so powerful. You just need to open your heart to him and accept it. Read his word and accept it and believe it and have confidence in Christ Jesus. Okay, so God bless you guys. God keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. Have a great Thursday.